All right then, my friends. So, so far we've seen that we can use the initial attribute and the animate attribute to animate different CSS properties from A to B. So from initial to animate. But what about controlling how that animation works? What about its duration or some kind of easing function or maybe a delay? Well, for all of that kind of stuff, we can use the transition attribute. Now, the transition attribute describes how the animation transitions from start to end. So from initial to animate. And to control it, we use the transition attribute like so and set it to an empty object to begin with. Then we can add some different properties in here to control that transition. So for example, I could add in a delay property and set that to be 1.5 seconds. And that means I want you to delay this animation. Don't start it until 1.5 seconds is up. So if I save this now and go to the home page, then we can see it's a little bit longer before the animation starts. Another one we can do is the duration. So if I set that to be five seconds, for example, then this thing right here going from zero to one is going to take five seconds, but it's not even going to start for 1.5 seconds. So in essence, it's 6.5 seconds in total. So save that preview and notice it fades in very slowly now over five seconds. Now I'm going to change that to 1.5 just to speed it up a little bit because I did think that was a bit too slow and that looks a bit better. Okay. So let's now go to the header and add some different transition properties to this thing down here where we animate this div. So again, I'm going to say transition is equal to an object. And inside this object, the first thing I'll do is set a delay of 0.2 seconds because at the minute it animates straight away. I want a very slight delay before it animates in. And we saw that there very subtle. OK, so we have that delay now. Now, another property that we can add to the transition object is the type property. Now, the value of this could be tween, inertia or spring, one of those three things. And they all result in different types of animation. And by the way, don't worry if you don't remember all of this. You can always check out the docs uh, for a reference of the different kinds of things. The most important thing is understanding how we construct these animations and delays. Don't worry about remembering every single property. So anyway, the type can be tween, inertia, or spring, and they all result in different types of animation. Now, at the moment, the default value for this thing right here is spring. And we can see that if I was to come over here and refresh, it's kind of like a spring the way it animates in. It bounces a little bit. Now, if I came over here and added the type property to this, and set it equal to something else like tween. And tween is more of an even transition. I mean, we can apply easing functions to this to control how it transitions, but it's not got that springy bouncy effect. So if I save this now and preview and refresh, it's gonna look much more uniform in the animation. We don't have that bouncy springy effect anymore. So I'm gonna change this back to spring. Now I don't have to manually say that because the default type of this thing was a spring and dependent on the type of motion we have like i said this defaults to a different value different types of animations have different default values okay but i'm going to explicitly add that on so we know at a glance what type of animation this is now i'm also going to add on a stiffness property and we can only use this if we're using the type of spring we can't add this to something that uses a tween or inertia. So I'm going to set this stiffness to be 120. Now, the higher the number, the more stiff this kind of spring will be. So if it was 500, for example, then it would be a very stiff kind of springy animation. Let me save this and show you. And we can see that it goes up and down quite a lot. If I change this to just five, it's not going to be very springy. And you'll see it's much more slower and virtually no spring at all. So I'm going to set this to be 120. The default, I think, is about 100. So I'm just making it slightly stiffer. And um, we can see if we refresh this, that looks quite nice. So like I said, this can only be used if the type is spring. And by the way, duration as well, this right here can only be used if the type is going to be tween. So this type right here, the default type of this is tween, right? Okay, let's move on and transition some other things so the next thing i'll do is add a transition to this button right here remember this is this thing if we go over here 
and this button zooms in. That's what that transition is all about, or that animation. Let's now add a transition property, and inside here, I'm gonna say explicitly that the type is spring, and like I said, I always like to explicitly write out the type when I need it to avoid any kind of unwanted effect, and also just to see at a glance what type of animation this is. Now, because this is spring, I can also add on a stiffness property, which I'm also gonna to set to be 120. So this, to be honest, is not gonna alter this animation that much. It's just gonna make it a little bit more springy. That's all, okay? So that looks pretty good to me. There's one more thing I'd like to do, and that's to actually animate in this container right here, this whole thing. And I want it to zoom in from the right onto the screen. So let me do that by first of all, turning this div into a motion div. Don't forget that step, I often do. It's a very easy mistake to make. So I'm gonna alt click both of those positions and say motion dot. So now this is a motion component and we can add on the initial attribute first of all. And the initial attribute is gonna say that the X position should start at minus 100 VW, in fact, no, not minus, it should be positive because I want it to go off the screen over to the right, minus would take it off over to the left. So that's the initial position. And now I can go to the animate property. So animate and set that equal to an object where X is gonna go to zero. Now I'm also gonna do a transition. So transition is equal to an object and the type again, I'll explicitly say is gonna be spring and also I'm gonna say that the delay on this is gonna be about 0.5 seconds. So when we go to this page, it's gonna wait 0.5 seconds before it starts this animation and brings it onto the screen. So we can see now that that comes onto the screen. That's pretty nice. I'm gonna to go to the home page and then navigate to this. So create your pizza, it waits, and then it animates in. Awesome. So there we go, that is transitions, and that's how we use them to control the animation. We are gonna be using them much more as we go forward, but next up, we're gonna take a look at hover effects and animations when we hover over elements.